are making a Monster High coffin cake, you will need three box cakes, two pink, one blue, three cups of cake flour, three cups of sugar, five and one fourth cups of milk, three cups of sour cream, three tablespoons of oil, three teaspoons of vanilla, 12 egg whites, and for the frosting, you will need four cream cheese and one big tub of Cool Whip and sugar to add to your liking. Now for your tools, you're gonna need your bowls, your measuring cups, your spoons, rubber spatula, a mixer, measuring spoons, a 12 by 18 rectangle cake pan, parchment or wax paper, vegetable shorten shortening for the pan, and flour also for the pan. Let's begin. So what you're gonna do first is add all of your cake mixes in. Then add your dry ingredients first, so your cake flour and your sugar. Then you're going to add the wet ingredients, so you're going to add your milk and your sour cream and your oil and vanilla. And then you mix all of that up. Mix it all up. And then when you're done with that, add the egg whites. All of them. You don't have to mix in between times. You can do all of them at the same time. Once you're done mixing the egg whites in, what you're going to do is take your pink food coloring and then add it to the batter. Then mix it until it is the desired pink that you want. Next, you're going to need your vegetable shortening and you're going to want to use it. You're going to want to swipe it all over the cake pan on the sides and the corners on the bottom make sure you don't miss any spots because if you do it could possibly is the cake could possibly stick to the pan and then not want to come out or fall apart you could also use some kind of like cake release that you can get from Wilton you can spray on the pan if you wanted to use that you could also but for me I rather use uh, vegetable shortening and flour so once you're done with the vegetable shortening put the flour in the pan and shake it around until it sticks to each corner each side everything until it's evenly coated with flour and then uh, dump the excess into the garbage See, and then this is what your cake pan should look like once you're all done coating it with flour. Once the ca cake pan is all coated, you're going to want to pour all the batter in there, in the cake pan. Um, make sure you do this one thing though. Take the cake pan and tap it onto the table several times until you see all the bubbles rise to the top. What that does is make sure that it heats evenly throughout the whole cake so it doesn't burn or um, doesn't get distorted. Once the cake is in the oven, make sure you wash all your um, utensils that you have so that way for the next cake they'll be all clean and you won't have to worry about scraping them off later. Now that the cake is in the oven, what are you going to do now? So I'm going to give you a recipe. So you can do this in your spare time, or you could do it while you're baking like I did, or anytime. It's called a Mississippi roast. What you'll need is a roast. I have, I have a pork roast. You could use um, any kind of roast that you choose. You're go also going to need one stick of butter. You're going to need pepperoncinis. You're going to need ranch dressing, the, the dry package kind. And you're going to need the au jus dry package and you just put the stick of butter on top put the pepperoncinis in it sprinkle both those packets on top and put it in the crock pot on low for eight hours or high for four hours and let me tell you even though you don't add water or broth to this it is so good by the time it is done trust me it's well worth making Ah, the cake is done after 45 minutes in the oven and it should look like this it's very even there's no rough spots there's no like brown patches or anything like that it is fantastic so what you're gonna want to do is take that parchment paper or wax paper and place it in there on top with a cookie sheet then you're going to take it with your pot holders, of course, because it's going to be very, very hot. And you're going to want to flip that bad boy over onto the table. Because, you know, um, I'm afraid that if you let it cool in the pan, which I've had, um, I had this do it to me sometimes before, where it could stick if you leave it in there. I know people are like, oh, let it cool. Yeah, I, 
I don't. I just tend to just flip it over and leave it on the table. You can leave it overnight or you can leave it for several hours until it cools before you start building. Boom. This is what it should look like once you take it out of the oven and once you place it onto the table. That's what it should look like. Yum, right? Once it's done cooling and you pull off the parchment paper, it should look very smooth. Okay, once all the cake layers are done, you're gonna stack them one at a time, but what you're going to do is you'll stack them, put a layer of frosting on it, stack the other layer, put a layer of frosting on it, and then stack the other layer. And then after that, because you don't want to put a whole bunch of frosting on the top of it and then start carving away, you're going to have a big mess. So you're going to look at a, either a picture of a coffin or if you, have, if you do it um, by what you see in your head, that's awesome. I was looking at a picture and I decided to not really like carve it out with my knife. I decided just to take a little bit away each time so I didn't like, because you can't put cake back on. So <laughs> you just take a little bit at a time until you get it the way you want it. Voila, a coffin. There you have it. So now we need to go to the next step, which is crumb coating. Most important step. Grab your cake spatulas and what you're gonna do is you're going to add the frosting, a very thin layer to the top and sides. And then what you'll do is you'll put it in the refrigerator for about, I don't know, 20 minutes to a half an hour. What that does is actually it seals in all the crumbs so you're not just uh, frosting it and then there's, I don't know if you can see on the picture, but there's crumbs everywhere when you start doing it. This way, when you let it set in and you start doing another layer, there's not gonna be those crumbs there. It'll all be sealed into the frosting anyways and you can just clean it up as you go, that's fine. Now I did the royal purple first with the frosting and here, here's what it looks like. I'm gonna take that royal frosting, the royal purple frosting, excuse me, and you're going to put it just on the top. Okay, just on the top. And you, you're gonna wanna take your big spatula, your big baking spatula, or I mean your cake spatula, and you're gonna wanna smooth it out as best as you can. You're not gonna get it perfect, so don't try. You, I'm a perfectionist, I cannot get it right. So just keep going, try to get it as smooth as possible. Don't get frustrated, and then we'll go on from there. Now from here, we're gonna want to put our pattern onto the cake. Now I'm not really that great to just pipe on the, the design itself. So what I did is I printed it out and then I cut it out and I gently placed it where I needed the skull to be. And then what I did after that is I traced it with my just plain frosting, the pr plain cream cheese frosting. You just pipe that around the border and then gently pick it up. And then I, yes, some of the frosting will come up with it, but you will fix it with the white frosting that we'll be putting in inside of the skull. So you won't have to worry about all that. All piped out. And now it kind of looks funny. So what you're going to do is you're just gonna slightly make it a little smooth with your small spatula. And then that should be fine. Don't get it perfect. Don't try to get it as smooth as possible. It'll be fine. Take your black icing or mix up black icing and trace around the white uh, end of it. Make your eyes and then fill the bow with pink. And then what you're going to do after that is make diagonal lines crisscrossed. I, I um, ended up using a ruler. I washed it off. It was like a plastic ruler. And I just took it and I laid it across the cake. And I did my lines that way. And then I ended up washing it off and it was fine. <laughs> so you could do it that way or you could do it your own way or you could do it by, by eye, you could do it with a string. It doesn't matter what, what you do. Just make sure you make crisscross diagonal lines. This time we're gonna use our green food coloring to mix up some uh, green frosting. Now, I didn't include 
any of the baking tips numbers or anything like that because this is all up to you this is just what I chose to do so you could do it you can do any border any way you want to on this it's all up to you just it's your freedom so I just decided to do like star swirls I don't know exactly what they're called I'm not a, a baking master but I decided to use that for the border and that is what it looks like I had not done the sides of the cake yet we're getting to it but this is what it looks like mix up some black frosting and what we're going to do with the sides now is make what I call cow spots you're going to do that all the way around the cake because after that we need to go back to our green frosting with a different tip but you could like I said you could use any tip anything you want you can make this whole cake out of stars if you want to that is completely up to you but make the cow spots all the way around back to that green again like I said I used the star shaped uh, baking tip and I used that all the way around the cake around what I called the cow spots for the sides and the top and the bottom and the and the other side but this is what it looks like after I had did all the sides I'm sorry that I'm like so bad at this <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this, but this is my first one, so bear with me. We're almost done. Okay, now here's what it looks like from another angle. I decided to do in the crisscrosses the black and the pink. You could do any color that you want to. You don't have to go with the black and pink, but that's what I did. And I wrote the little girl's name on there, and she's so cute too but she just turned eight her name was Maddie I did this uh, for a friend of mine for her little girl and I she said she just loved it so I'm super happy but I'm really glad that you stuck with my horrible horrible uh, first cake vlog baking thing whatever you want to call it because I'm horrible at this I know I'm missing lots of details and I know people have a lot of questions but Go ahead, ask me the questions. I will be happy to answer anything that you need me to need me to answer. And if you do like this and you do want me to try doing more baking vlogs, then let me know because I have more cakes coming up. I have a cake in April that's going to be a fire truck, and I have a Plants vs Zombies cake in May, and I have um, tea sandwiches and Japanese tea cookies coming up in June so anything that you uh, that you want me to make or you want to see this again or anything like that please let me know in the comments uh, if you like this give it a like if, share it with your friends if you really want them to check this out and I will see you guys again bye guys Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos and more of the vlogs. I really appreciate you coming to watch any of the videos of mine. So thank you very much for watching. Bye guys.